Well, it happened once again. Both Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema were confronted in public by their constituents. And this is really important, even if they don't necessarily budge whenever an activist approaches them. I do still think that it's important to showcase this because direct pressure is, I think, the best form of activism. When you are in the ear of a politician and you directly make your case to them and put pressure on them. Now, uh, before I show you the first video, which is of Joe Manchin being confronted by a climate activist, uh, I want to give you a little bit of context because there are five climate activists who have been on a hunger strike outside of the White House now for days, urging the Democratic Party to take action on climate change and not allow people like Joe Manchin to water down the Build Back Better Act. So what you're going to see is one of these climate activists who is on a hunger strike. They had an opportunity to confront Joe Manchin. And as you're going to see, he kind of engages with them. He tries to placate them and set up an appointment, which... You know, they expect him to not get back to them. But take a look at what happens here. We can't get in on meeting. We've been calling. We're trying to get a meeting. We're we're call my office for meeting. You're more than welcome to, and we're happy to have you. Okay, I want to live. I want to live. Young people want to live. So watching that was incredibly disheartening, but yet, I mean, his response was predictable. He had no concern for the future that he is depriving this young person of. And he constantly just tried to reiterate, look, call my office. We'll set up a meeting. They knew that he was just trying to get them off of his back. He, he had no interest in actually engaging further with this individual. It's just when you're put on the spot and there are cameras in your face, you want to try to find some way to make the yelling and the pressure stop. But they know that they had that limited window of opportunity, and once it's gone, it's never coming back. He's not going to meet with them. So, you know, um, that person said, I'm going to grow up in a catastrophic climate emergency if you continue to block the civilian climate core. And really, they made a strong case for their own survival. And to see Joe Manchin not really care, <laughs> again, not surprising in the slightest, but they said, I have dreams. Young people have dreams. I want to live. Young people want to live. And, you know, he tried to deflect and bring up the emissions of Asia. We're not in Asia. We can't control what governments in Asia do. We can control what our government that's supposed to be representing us does. And what makes this entire situation even more disheartening is when you consider the fact that Democratic Party loyalists, more centrist, neoliberal figures like Sally Albright, was actually making fun of these young people going on strike over climate change. I mean, it's, it's easy for you to say that when you're going to be able to live, hopefully, if you're lucky, a lengthy life and die of old age. But people now who are growing up, Zoomers and millennials, we're going to die because of climate change. And if we're lucky enough to survive and become as old as you are, then, I mean, what are we going to be witnessing? Climate apocalypse, wars over water, increasing fascism due to the refugee crises that climate change is going to inevitably cause. It's just, I have no time for these people who are dismissing these climate activists. Now, I know what you're thinking, that what Joe Manchin did there, that was really... It was cold. He was overly dismissive. He obviously tried to placate them, and he was seemingly distant. But that is actually 
preferable when you juxtapose that interaction with this interaction that we're going to see when Kirsten Cinema was approached in an airport while she was having a conversation with Tim Scott, and she was much, much worse when it comes to her response, or lack thereof. I think it's, uh, and I'm wondering, quite interesting, I know you've met the dozens of lobbyists, you know, I just have to you, I'm meeting with dozens, I know you're meeting with dozens of lobbyists, the world doesn't and really talking anymore. with corporate right. donors about sense. the package, yeah, how many times will you meet with constituents, Today, well, how many times have you met with constituents yeah. in negotiating bills Sorry about this. Yeah, well, a, I think it's part of the course, right? It part is. Of the course. Why won't you meet with my it's family, my constituents, and yeah. I can have them meet you next week. Hmm. Well, Every single year in Arizona, it's getting hotter and hotter. We're breaking records. There's either no monsoon, or it's the We're longest season. Way. Yeah. People are suffering. Your constituents are suffering. What are you going to do about climate change? Next week in Glasgow could be the last chance. Please answer me, Senator. My family, my house, we're from Tucson. We're constituents. Thanks for your work. That man at the end that uh, thanked Tim Scott, that really, um, I don't know what it was about that, but it triggered me. It It's bleak shit, right? It, it made me go even more doomer. I mean, Tim Scott is a Republican politician. He's a corporatist. What are you thanking him for? Standing up to Democrats when it comes to this manufactured culture war that the Republican Party is propagating because they're trying to distract you from the real issues? It's just awful. But I mean, getting to the real subject here, Kirsten Cinema, she refused to even acknowledge that person who was making a pretty compelling case as to why maybe you should have a conversation with us because it's really easy to get a hold of you if we donated lots of money to your campaign. But Kirsten Cinema didn't even acknowledge her existence. And the only time when Kirsten Cinema did acknowledge her, she said, Don't touch me. You can see that. She didn't touch Kirsten Cinema in that video. That was obvious, but I think maybe her arm or, or her hand brushed up against Kirsten Cinema, and immediately Kirsten Cinema just recoils. She doesn't want any peasant germs on her. The fact that they're breathing her airspace is offensive to her. I mean, Kirsten Cinema is just one of the worst. And what this person is saying isn't controversial. Hey, meet with us in the same way you meet with corporate lobbyists and your donors. Maybe have a conversation with your constituents. That person is a constituent of Kirsten Cinema. And she said, you know, um, I want to make sure that we do something about climate change. Your constituents are suffering. What are you going to do about climate change? And next week in Glasgow could be the last chance that we have. And, you know, the only response that we get from Kirsten Cinema with regard to the substance, aside from her saying, don't touch me, is uh, sorry about that. But she says this to Tim Scott. It's just, it's awful. And since we're talking about Kirsten Cinema and her being confronted in public, I've got to give you an update that's going to make you feel even worse about this situation. Uh, because you'll probably recall the bathroom protesters at ASU. Well, it turns out uh, the situation has gotten worse, but not for Kirsten Cinema, for the protesters who dared to ask her to uh, help them, which is what she was elected to do after they got her elected. Caroline Vakil of The Hill reports, police from Arizona State University where cinema teaches are recommending that four people involved in the incident receive misdemeanor charges related to disruption of an educational institution and disorderly conduct, the Arizona Republic reported. Adam Wolf, a spokesperson for the university's police, told The Hill in a statement that the ASU Police Department has completed its investigation and submitted charges to the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. So because they dared to ask Kirsten Cinema questions persistently, but this is a lawmaker because they dared to ask her questions. Now there's this recommendation of charges. Now Kirsten Cinema hated this. She put out a statement basically trying to make it seem as if her students were victimized when that's clearly not the case. But if Kirsten Cinema had even a shred of decency in her, she would come out and denounce this and say, listen, I understand that emotions are high. There's a lot at stake. And I don't approve of what these protesters did. Following me into the bathroom was too much. I don't appreciate that, but I don't want them to be prosecuted. That's the least that she can do if she were a half-decent person. But we know she's not going to do that because she wants any peasant who dare challenge her publicly to uh, go away. If they have to be jailed, so be it. This is truly the worst of the worst. So 
between Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, substantively, they're both they're both horrible. They're equally culpable in killing this agenda that the Democratic Party was united in getting through. But now they've watered it down, and they're still being smug and elitist as they do it. But Kirsten Sinema somehow just finds a way to go above and beyond in her cruelty and doesn't even try to placate the person who's trying to have a conversation with her. I mean, what Joe Manchin does, it's not enough, but to even attempt to converse with someone, that shows that you at least have the bare minimum recognition of that person's humanity, but Kirsten Sinema won't even go that far. So, I mean, yeah, I assume that these public confrontations are going to continue to happen so long as they're necessary, because when you cut off the line of communication between you and your constituents, they're going to have to find alternative ways of reaching you. And this is one of them. And guess what? It's effective. It gets your attention. So they're going to keep resorting to this so long as you keep ignoring them.